Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Cookie Cast. Today on Cookie Cast, oh my word, the longest off season in any sport is coming to a close. And by the time you hear this, it'll be mere moments away if you listen to it the moment it comes out. But if you listen to it later, then it'll have already happened. Anyway, football's back, baby. Football's back. Just blew your eardrums out there because you, like me, you're excited and you're happy to know that football's back. That's right. American football for the people in the England places, kind of like that. Football for you American people. American football's back, baby. That's what I'm trying to say in my own little way. Myself, my glamorous co-host, Paul Williams, we're taking you through it. Off-season, check. Pre-season, check. First game, check. First games, check. Side bet, side hustle, check. Everything. It's all here. And all you have to do is listen or watch along. Before we get to that bit, though, click that like button. Click the subscribe button. Obviously, if you haven't already done these things, leave a review, share the podcast around, all of that good stuff. Football's back, baby. Right, let's get into it. Here we go. This is Cookie Cast. Laces out. Recording in progress. What, what, what is this? What could this possibly be? What sport requires just the, the, the guy who allegedly runs things? I mean, I'm just the face at the end of the day. It's just all just a pretty face. Um, and the real mastermind behind the Cookie Cast podcast, Paul Williams. What could possibly, what sport could, hang on a minute. Hang on. If I cast my mind back, I don't know, let's say, uh, what, nine months-ish? No, it's not that, is it? It's... So let's go with seven. Let's go with seven to be safe. More than, more than half a year ago. I cast my mind back. I seem to remember there was a situation where you and I used to get together once a week, sometimes with a guest, often with a guest. We used to talk about a sport. And then that sport died. Oh man, I wish that sport was coming back. In about 20 something hours. 28 hours, maybe. That's right. I am alluding to the fact that myself and Paul are back once again to talk about a sport that isn't even from the country we live in, but is very dear to our hearts. That's right. It's the still named, until until somebody decides it's not, Laces Out podcast, Yorkshire and dare I say, England's number one NFL podcast. It can only be that time of year because, as you can see, we've both got hoodies on. You know, we're all... Because it's 27 degrees. And I was in a shop today that had their Christmas decorations out. So, it's all over the shop. Um, Paul... How has the off how has the off season changed you? Uh, you? So I've been meaning to ask you about this. You uh, obviously there's a little bit of housekeeping, some personal information. You were in a relationship. You had a girlfriend, and now now you've got an ex girlfriend. So there's that situation. Um, obviously, you know, it's real real sad time. Um, you did gain a wife out of the 
out of the procedure. That, that, that was that was the upshot of the of the whole situation, and obviously um, the the last one of the last sort of occasions I was doing this very podcast came mere weeks. Well, mere weeks. It was it was well, it was one one of the podcasts that we did as, as, as towards the end of the season was in fact around the NFC and AFC title games, which took place on uh, the same weekend as um, as my as my stag weekend, of course. So we're almost, like Andy said, seven, eight months removed from that point. Um, How has it changed me? Um, Is it possible to be more cynical about just life in general at any particular point, given how sort of particularly cynical we, we find ourselves to be? Absolutely. I mean, age... Going out and living life day in, day out. All of these factors add to the cynicism of life. Um, I'm sure a lot of the other NFL podcasts out there started this jolly. They were like, yay, the season's back. whoop de do um, I'm just trying I'm just trying not to melt in my seat. You know. <laughs> that that's where I'm at. Um, desperately Desperately trying to get my head round all the movers and the shakers in the off season because some of those are a doozy. Uh, it does feel like um, certainly the last. I mean, obviously we're going to get into it, but um, the last season certainly this season's not looking not looking too shabby for uh, just WTF factor. Um, Something that I did think we should start with is the utter joy around the NFL. Um, I don't know if you call it the the social media team side of things, but the NFL as a whole leaning into the NFL is scripted and just going crazy on it. And I love every minute of it, every single video, every single tweet every everything that they've, that they've just embraced this aspect sometimes you know you were saying about being cynical some cynics might say that they're just leaning into it to make it a little less obvious um another thing i've enjoyed possibly from today being the um the manning cast um audition video which has been just Mm, just, I, I, I think I've now said it on every podcast we've done, and it is this: when a social media team leans into something and just goes all out to the point where anybody out there in the world couldn't compete with what they've come up with themselves, I'm just like, mm, chef's kiss everywhere. <laughs> so. A lot to get through. I know you've got a, a a folder like this that you've condensed down to bring the finest. Holy smokes! There's me turning up with a with a mobile phone and a cup of coffee. Like it's fine. It'll all be fine. I'm sure, it'll be fine. Um, I'll add. I'll interject. My um, knowledge isn't the right word. Um, well, it'll be your own thoughts and feelings. My it, take. So. There we go. Um, and we've got a couple of things to to sort of set the ball rolling on for the season. Obviously, we've got to get into the picks. We've got to get into the season-long picks. And uh, did somebody mention side bet action? I think so. All that to come and more. I imagine the only place to go is the off season, and I know you've been uh, combing the internet, reading the books, and uh, getting all the knowledge for these lovely people. So, unless you have anything outside of that, no, no. Well, like, like say, I've I've, uh, I've uh, combed many a many a website. I've, I've used. Information from both the uh, the NFL.com, ESPN, Sky, 
all the all BBC, all, all the usual hot spots. Um, and I suppose we'll start in the same place that we started the off season twenty twenty two. Um and for the second consecutive season, arguably the greatest quarterback to ever play the game, Tom Brady announced his retirement from the sport. However, in a uh, different outcome to last season, this one appears to be legitimate for now. Um, as, uh, as, as Andy alluded to earlier, we're mere hours away from the season starting up again. And as at the time of recording, he is still unsigned to any of the 32 teams in the league. Will that still be the case come Super Bowl Sunday, or dare we say, even Thanksgiving Thursday? So, so, so my, my first interruption will be, there is absolutely a book running on at which point Mr. Brady gets the phone call that says, yeah, we, we really need you at this point in time. Um, and he just he's like, looks like I'm suiting up one last time. He, he, he himself has already joked, as I previously mentioned, check out the, uh, the Manning cast audition video. And uh, as the kids like to say, stick, stick to the end, watch till the end, whatever it is. Like we said, all it takes is one team to suffer a catastrophic injury in training. they not have a backup and they'll be straight on the phone. So, in a, in another topic that we covered last off season, the season after signing a new three year extension to his deal in Green Bay, Aaron Rodgers has finally seemingly got his ultimate wish: a trade away from the Packers. Rodgers has moved to the New York Jets for a 2023. First, second, and sixth round pick, and a conditional 2024 second round pick if Rodgers plays 65% of the snaps this coming season. Now, now then. So, in return, oh, just, just, to, just to finish it off, in return, Go on. The, uh, the Jets also got the Packers' first round and fifth round picks from this season's draft. So, alongside trading Rodgers to the Jets, they swapped first round picks. The Jets gave up their second and sixth round picks, but they gained back a fifth round pick as well. So, all, all, all told, they didn't actually really have to pay that much to get him. Uh, it's funny, it's funny you should mention paying that much to get him. Uh, because one of the interesting things about the contract is Rodgers has taken a massive pay cut like an astronomical pay cut the, it reeks of let's let's just get let's just get it done and then we'll talk money i imagine he's got a little bit more on his plate than how much is how many pennies are in the bank i think he's got a little bit more of some uh he needs to be serving up some humble pie to uh, other places. Uh, I think that's probably what's driving him more than, like I say, the uh, the money on the table. And I know he's taken like next to no money this season, and either no money next to no money this season and next season, and then there's a conversation for a, a, a third season if that's believable. Um, Honestly, before we were starting this, I was like, do we just set aside an entire podcast to talk about this? Because there is so much. Like, it, it's absolutely the number one story from the off-season. There are things like Aaron Rodgers has, has essentially built a mini Green Bay round him at the Jets. You know, it's it's things like that. It's the money stuff. He bought a house, which, you know, they always say, 
You know, if you're buying houses, you're setting up roots, you plan to be there a while, so on and so forth. The house was a lot more than his contract this year. <laughs> um, all of that sort of stuff, I was like, we could genuinely do an entire podcast on this deal alone. Um, to, to talk about things like what Green Bay looks like without... Aaron Rodgers, you could go back and talk about like previous seasons and how long ago it was that you know he wasn't happy and made it well known at Green Bay. There's a lot, and I got to a point where I was like, I mean, what would we even call that podcast? So I was like, I know, I know you'll it'll be on your list. I know we'll cover it. I, I've given some of the snippets there. I imagine any of you who's listened to this is probably aware of the deal and ultimately we are just doing a recap of it so there you go mm. like like you said it's, it's, it's probably much bigger than the rest of the news and stuff that's happened in the off season altogether um, but yeah if we, if we were to sort of go through it like intensively we'd be here for the rest of the, the rest of time memorial uh, so in other QB uh, in other QB news uh, Derek Carr joined the New Orleans Saints following his, relief, his release from the Las Vegas Raiders. I believe they took the decision to release him after the fact that they'd explored options for a trade and there seemed to be no takers, so they just let him go. Um, I, I, truly, I truly believe that there is a team out there for Derek Carr. I don't think he had found it up to this point. And I don't necessarily think at this point in time that he has found it now to sort of skirt skirt around, you know, the the reading between the lines. Um, I'm pleased that that he managed to get a, a position, and it is it's it's QB one because in a situation where there's no take us for trade your immediate your immediate thought is backup quarterback you know QB2 QB3 maybe um, I think you know definitely not game one but first two or three games might give a better idea as if, if this is the fit for him I, I imagine he'll, I imagine he'll do alright I think he's he's got He's got decent weapons around him, like obviously like um, I can't think of his name now. He's been missing that much. Michael Thomas hasn't really played for the past two years, so if he can stay fit, you'd imagine that he'd be one of the better the better players in the team to sort of like you know be a pass catcher. Alvin Kamara's you'd sort of your dual threat as like as both a running back and then out of the backfield. So he's he's definitely got like things to work with around him. Um, it's always going to be one of those things in it where he's, he's probably not in the top 10 quarterbacks in the league, but he's certainly in that next sort of like group of lads who can step up and like sort of challenge for like the, the best of the rest and whatnot. Yeah. But taking his spot in Las Vegas is former San Francisco quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo, who signed a three year, $72.75 million contract. Be interested to see if he can stay fit for any amount of time. It seems like that certainly wasn't the case for his <clears throat> for his period of time. It, it, it's in funny San because knowing your opinions of his previous team and your opinions of him as a quarterback, I was like, "How's Paul gonna How's Paul gonna navigate this one? Is he gonna go just just lop him off at the knees, or is he just gonna be like, oh, I hope he does real well?" It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. And the saying goes, you get what you pay for. It, uh... It's it's that it, it's it'll be my concern. If if I was a Raiders fan, that'd be my only concern is the fact that like he's, in the entire time he's been in San Francisco. I don't think he's ever put together more than 
10 games on the, on, on the spin, where he's been healthy, he's been, he's been very injury prone, shall we say. Mm. And, finishing off the quarterback games, we stay somewhat in San Francisco, in the fact that the trail answer is over, before it even had a chance to really begin. The 49ers have traded into the Dallas Cowboys in return for a fourth round pick, which is crazy. When you uh, when you consider that this guy was uh, third overall in the twenty twenty one draft, how why did the sky seemingly fall in on the third on the third overall pick of the twenty twenty one draft so quickly? The trade leaves Brock Purdy as the unquestioned starter in San Francisco, but are they taking a gamble on a player who only has nine games worth of NFL tape to go off? So I, I saw all this unfold. Um, I'm not going to name names here, but some some teams' off-season business has been more than questionable. You know, I, I can only imagine that the script has them going uh, going down down the uh, pecking order of the season because. That's your quarterback news. Uh, amongst the main skill position players that changed location in the offseason, uh, Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, signed a contract with the Ravens, having missed the entire 2022 season with the knee injury that took him out of the Rams' Super Bowl win against the Bengals early. Uh, Jacoby Myers has signed a three-year deal with the Raiders, while Juju Smith-Schuster has replaced him in New England fresh off the back of his own Super Bowl success. Uh, Miles Sanders has switched Philadelphia for Carolina, who also brought in Adam Thielen, DJ Chark, and Hayden Hurst to boost their receiving core. And the other notable off-season moves that I had written down were that DeAndre Hopkins has moved to the Tennessee Titans, Ezekiel Elliott, after a large period of uh, being a free agent, eventually settled with the New England Patriots, uh, and Dalvin Cook was one of the players who joined the uh, Aaron Rodgers revolution in New York by signing with the Jets. The biggest, the biggest one there, I think, uh, especially once again knowing who I'm talking to, it's got to be the Zeke. the 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 way that the whole thing baffled it just baffled me. I was like. Why? Why has he gone to free agent? Why? I know. I know. We, we're talking somebody who's had like injury. It's not. You know, he's well into his career now and stuff. But for you know, any anybody who's been here before will know it's not. It's not my. It's not my favorite team, and it's certainly not my favorite quarterback. But I've always. I suppose respected that combination, the Dak Prescott to Ezekiel Elliott connection. At at times, I personally felt that it was, you know, at certain points in certain seasons, all they had going for them. The, uh, uh, you know, again, could probably do a a, a decent size podcast on. How the Cowboys just baffle me a lot of the time. Ever since I watched the Hard Knocks, the the season, because I I was like, oh, you know, come on, come on, Cowboys, and then it's just like, what are you doing? <laughs> um, the Adam Thielen thing's interesting, uh, but yeah, the the Zeke thing just really stood out, and it and it makes me wonder. I, 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 I'm a cynic. I always look for, is there something else? Is there another reason that we're not being told? I think I think the most surprising thing with the Zeke situation for me was that the, 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 the amount of time that he's been seemed to spend yeah. on, on free agency yeah. without getting picked up by someone. Um, it just, it, it seemed... Odd's probably not the right word, but it, it just, it, it was... It was interesting to see that not any, not more teams have sort of like taken the plunge. Yeah, to absolutely. Like it, you know, I was like, he's going to get picked up day one. And then day one came and went. And it was like, 
interesting. Well, he's going to get picked up in the next couple of days. And that just carried on. And it's like, are we really going to see Zeke go out of the out of the league at this stage? You're telling me he's got nothing left to offer? Yeah, I think that the whole... The running back sort of position took a bit of a knock this off-season. With all, obviously, with, with him not being able to sort of like settle anywhere until, obviously, he re-signed with the Patriots. There was the whole situation with... Uh, Saquon Barkley's new contract in New York that seemed like it was on the table and then it was pulled and then they couldn't agree to something well there's been, a, there's been an overall issue money wise hasn't there for running backs the, the, the view <laughs> the view of everybody apart from the league is running backs don't get paid the money they should the league's take on it is yeah they do and obviously when you've got that You've got that whole multi-billion dollar corporation saying, no, 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 you earn enough. That's not going to sit well with anybody. But then, you know, you've got guys who want to play football. So there has to be some sort of meet in the middle. Yeah, we'll move on. We'll move on anyway. So in this April draft, Three of the first four selections taken off the board were new quarterbacks. Carolina traded up with the Bears to select Bryce Young, first overall. The Texans used the second overall pick to take C.J. Stroud. And finally, the Colts may have found the long-term successor to Andrew Luck, having taken Anthony Richardson with the fourth selection. Um, You would imagine that all three will go into the start of the season as the new um, the new sort of main man, as it were, at their respective teams. I don't really know who the Texans have got outside of CJ Stroud as the starter. Um, I think it was pretty much nailed on that um, the Colts uh, were going to start with Anthony Richardson um, I don't really know what the situation is like in Carolina. Um, so it'll be interesting to see who does start the season for those three teams. It's obviously they're the new three faces of those particular franchises. So whether they sort of throw them at the deep end or try to sort of um, build them up from, from the sort of the, the ground and then give them a little bit more time to sort of bed in before just throwing them to the wolves. Um, was it the was it the Colts that had the whole the the owner moving the whale? Well, I don't know. Is it is it Jim Irsay at the Colts? Yeah, yeah. So he decided to take a whale that's been in captivity for donkeys years, spend twenty million dollars, and move the whale. Um, this was all at the same time as refusing to pay. So certain players what they thought they were worth and um, yeah the whale didn't make it well moving swiftly on from uh, things that things that didn't last very long that takes us to uh, Sean Payton's retirement as a uh, just after one season away from the game, he has agreed to take over as the main man in Denver. The Broncos traded their first pick in the 2023 uh, draft and a second round pick in 2024's draft to acquire the new head coach, or his rights, from the New Orleans Saints. Um, they did get back a 2024 third round pick alongside Payton. Uh, but he takes over as the new head coach. Will he be able to get a tune out of the misfiring Russell Wilson? Uh, something came out in the uh, in the news today. Yeah, I was just I about to say, there. obviously, today's take, <laughs> take on things. I'm like, mm, I hope we're going to talk about this. Oh, oh, I think everyone's there for uh, the uh, the Sean Payton versus uh, Russell Wilson implosion that's almost certain to come. After he told him to uh, maybe concentrate on his game and stop kissing babies. 
On a scale of one to, I don't know, nine million, how hard would you have high-fived him after he fired off? You need to stop worrying about Wilson Inc. and start worrying about the game. I'd have been like... <sighs> yeah, it's, oh. it's, it's just going to be... You know that uh, that gif of Jason Momoa opening up the lawn chair and sitting down? It's just going to be that. It's like, I don't care about the football. I'm here for the show. <laughs> it's, it's a beautiful sight. A truly, truly wonderful sight. Um, in other head coaching news, D'Amico Ryans traded the defensive coordinator position in San Francisco for the head coach role in Houston. Whereas Frank Reich has become the new man in Charlotte. Replacing Frank Reich in Indianapolis is former Eagles offensive coordinator Shane Steichen. And the final new head coaching position that has been filled by Steichen's uh, defensive coordinator counterpart, Jonathan Ganning, uh, sorry, Jonathan Gannon, who replaces Cliff Kingsbury in Arizona. And the final thing that I had in the offseason that was of note was that the Washington Commanders are now under new ownership just one year after rebranding as the Commanders. Previous owner Dan Schneiders uh, approved a sale to an ownership group led by Josh Harris, who happens to be the owner of of both the Philadelphia 76ers basketball franchise and the New Jersey Devils ice hockey franchise. The deal worth a reported $6.05 billion dollars. (laughs) <laughs> Obviously, Dan Schneider's time in uh, in control of the Commanders was interesting, shall we say, as it seemed to lurch from uh, scandal to scandal, fiasco to fiasco, and I believe they were one of the teams with the longest playoff success. I don't think they won a single playoff game under his uh, under his ownership, so. Not the best. Um, I was saying to you offline, I'm sure after the sale went through, I saw a thing saying that they were going to rename the team. <laughs> it wouldn't, like, it oh, wouldn't surprise great. me. It, 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 it might have that scenario of, has, it, has his name done such irreparable damage to that sort of whole thing that they're just better off just saying, right, let's just, let's just put a match to it, burn the whole fucking lot. And we'll just start again as the Washington Three Peters or something like that. I, I don't know. That's all I had. Um, unless, unless you had anything else to sort of like bring up. No, I knew I knew that you'd been spent like the last couple of days just jotting jotting in the book. So I I was essentially working on the principle that I would just uh, yeah just add my two penneth worth to anything that you might have had. So I knew you'd have done. Far better research than I could have uh, could have mustered. Um, so no, I don't. Nothing's nothing's springing springing out right now. Um, shall we give these lovely people the opportunity to grab a, a drink and refresh themselves, ready for the real reason we're here to start talking twenty twenty three slash twenty twenty four. Season, mm. oh, I like sal- it. Salivate, I like it a lot. At the, at the thought, right? Uh, we'll be back momentarily. You don't even have to touch that down. See you in a moment. Recording in progress. I should have done this. That would have been very nice, and uh, would have been. Perfect sort of accompaniment to the uh, table American football game that could be played. That anyone that has a folded up piece of paper, crisp packet, anything else similar that they want to, uh, you know, just take care of. But yeah, get those, get those posts up, and uh, see how many uh, field goals you can kick through. So we've come to the point of the season where we need to give our season-long picks for the NFL. So, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, on the podcast, we need to make our predictions for the Super Bowl. We give the team from the AFC, the team from 
the NFC, the team we think will win that matchup, and the person that we think will be listed as the game's MVP. We also go along and just list a regular season league MVP at the same time. And then at the end of the season, we talk up the scores and see if anyone was anywhere close to being correct. And I think at last count, last season, well, I don't even need to guess. I could literally just look back in the book. Um, what did we have? Uh, we had one person select the correct outcome for both the matchup, the winner, and the MVP. I said both. I should have said all three. So, Mark correctly, trajected, uh, correctly uh, requested a Chiefs-Eagles Super Bowl with the Chiefs winning and Patrick Mahomes to be listed as the MVP. Um, the popular pick during the uh, th- th- by the podcast was Bills versus Buccaneers, somehow. Not entirely sure why. Can't see that being the pick this season. Regular season MVP. There were three correct selections of Patrick Mahomes by myself, Rob Rafton and Matt, uh, Matt Hur- oh no, not Matt Hurley, it was Matt Moore. I apologise. So, can we repeat that this season? I have my Super Bowl matchup written in the book. I'm going to come to you first, and I'm going to see if yours matches up with what I've got. I don't think it will. No, you love a, you love a cheeky one, whereas I'm a little too predictable. Um, it's funny when because when you were using the word repeat a, a lot through that, uh, I, I was I was feeling a bit like ah oh, he's rumbled me, um, because no surprises I'm seeing a repeat Super Bowl, Chiefs Eagles, a repeat winner, Chiefs win, a repeat MVP. Patrick Mahomes. Do you want do you want my season long now? Or are you gonna do yours and then we'll do season long together? Because uh, Oh I'm writing it in. Was that not your pick? Yeah, that was that was that was my Super Bowl prediction. But do you want my um I mean my season long MVP? Oh, Sorry, no, I'll, I'll come. I'll come to you for that uh, once I've once I've confirmed my Super Bowl matchup. So, I have half of your Super Bowl matchup, but it's not the half that people probably think it will be. You've got the Eagles. I have got the Eagles to both make and win the Super Bowl, and I've got Jalen Hurts to be the MVP. But the AFC team that I think they will take on. Is the Cincinnati Bengals. Really? Mm. I mean, I'm very much... Uh, I think they got, not to say unlucky, last season. Um, but obviously they got uh, they got all the way to the AFC Championship game. I'm not going to lie. I, 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 abs- I absolutely love that Super Bowl. I'd, I'd be... I'd be all over that. The only thing that concerns me about the Bengals at this stage, bearing in mind we haven't even kicked the season off yet, is the Joe Burrows thing. You know, missing missing like missing week one, missing week two. It, you know, it's never too late and all of that. It's let's say you miss week one, you miss week two, you're back for week three. But what does week three look like? Week four, things are still. I couldn't. I could. I didn't feel comfortable going for a a, a pick. A season long pick, weirdly enough, with too many variables, which might sound like I went for a safe pick. Who knows. Interesting. So, I didn't realise that there was concern over his injury uh, status um, to, for Joe Burrow. Not only is Bengals 
head, or, or a part, apparently, according to the ESPN Fantasy app, Meg Nouns head coach, Zach Taylor, said that Burrow, calf, is expected to pronounce his bit fully in Wednesday's practice. So, as it stands, they're not concerned over his, his fitness ahead of Sunday's opener against the Browns. Um, but, it's funny that we should have mentioned Joe Burrow, actually, as that brings me to my regular season MVP selection. Of Joe Burrow, I think it's the. T- I think he's uh, he's ready to sort of <clears throat> step up to prove that he's he's like the second best quarterback in the league behind Patrick Mahomes. Obviously, uh, Josh Allen probably have something to say about that, um, but I think well, Jalen Hurts will probably have something to say about that as well. To be fair, um, I think there's an argument to be made that those are the four. Those are the four that are sort of on. Like the next level that's above any of the rest of the quarterbacks. Honestly, I've seen some, um, I've seen some Josh Allen stuff in the off season, and I, I, I just, I, I love everything he's doing. I'm just like, I really want the Bills to succeed, just purely because of the stuff that I've seen him doing in the off season. He fired. He was. I'm sure he was on a podcast, and he fired off a joke that he set up like. Like earlier, he he got a he got a reporter with a joke that he set up a year beforehand. He tried to shake a guy's hand that had interviewed him, and the guy just completely blanked him. So a year, almost to the day later, he's interviewed by the same guy. The guy finishes the interview, sticks his hand out to shake his hand, and Josh Allen just walks away. <laughs> And they were like, he's been waiting a year to fire this one up. I was like, you, sir, are a legend. He, everything, I love everything he's doing. I love everything about, like... I remember a time when I was like, oh, man, the Bills are terrible. And now I'm like, if there is a team I'm rooting for more than the Bills, I'll, I'll, I'd struggle to find it. I just I just love everything about what's going on. Um, so yes, absolutely, uh, all the love for for Josh Allen. I agree with everything you said about Joe Burrows as well. I obviously you have to be careful how you word certain things for whatever reason, but I agree with what you were saying about last season as far as the Bengals. Um, yeah, just some would say unlucky. But well, when when you're talking about a game of skill, does does look feature, etc. etc. Um. So, who is your selection for the regular season MVP? Can I ask you a question? Go on. Can you tell me who I put down last season? I think deep down you know who you put down last season. And could it be construed as a you went a year too early, thinking he was either going to get the move that he wanted, or he was really going to knuckle down and show the people who were giving him this new contract the reason why they should have given him the new contract earlier? There are two possible outcomes here. One, the Jets remain the Jets for whatever reason. The Jets. Stay the Jets. The second possible outcome is that every single team, every single naysayer, every single person who's ever looked wrong in a particular direction is eating the biggest plate of humble pie. And yes, this season's MVP will absolutely be Aaron Rodgers. He'll be there just like... They'll be playing, how do you like me now? It'll just be... It'll, it'll be the thing of cinema. Well, I'm intrigued because I've not actually looked at these markets yet. So, I'm going to have a look and see who the current favourite for the MVP is. I believe it's Patrick Mahomes. I believe what I looked at earlier said... Uh, Chief to win the Super Bowl, Patrick Mahomes, MVP, 
but I think it listed him as both. It's one of those things, it's hard to get away from the, the whole Patrick Mahomes thing. It's difficult to get away, you know. To be to be fair, he is he's currently eleven to two to be the MVP regular season. Um, however, if you're a, if you're a bet if you're a betting man and you're a customer with Sky with Skybet, you can get thirteen to two. The uh, the next favourites at seven to one are Josh Allen and Joe Burrow. Yeah. Um, Aaron Rodgers, you can get odds of fourteen to one. It's worth fifty p at the end of the day. Absolutely. If feeling flush, um, maybe even a pound. If you if you want to waste some money, you can get uh, two hundred and fifty one on George Kittle to be the regular season MVP. Or Carson Wentz. Not entirely sure why you did that. But yes, so. Those are the first of our, I'm sure, many regular and season-long <clears throat> NFL predictions, which leaves us only with week one's game picks and then week one's side bet picks left to do. So, Andy has already provided me with his selections. I've already got my selections in play. And our guest for this week, as we were unable to obtain an in-person guest, as you can see, um, Doing her first set of predictions as a married lady, no less. Not a married it's, lady. <laughs> the guest. It's, it's, Amy, it's Amy Williams, ladies and gentlemen, providing, uh, providing selections that may or may not have literally been pulled from thin air. So, opening the first week of the NFL season, as is, uh, as is customary, Excuse me. We have the defending Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs opening up at home to the Detroit Lions. Myself and Andy feel this will go one way, and that it will be a comfortable Chiefs win. Mrs. Williams disagrees wholeheartedly and thinks we're going to get the first upset of the season with the Detroit Lions win. She is one of the kind of ladies. Yeah. We then move to the Sunday slot of games, starting at 6pm local British time. We have the Carolina Panthers taking on the Atlanta Falcons. Myself and Andy all in on the Falcons. Amy has taken the Panthers. Texans at Ravens. It's a clean sweep for the Ravens. Next up we have the Bengals at the Cleveland Browns. Myself and Andy all in on the Bengals. Amy has taken the Browns for this one. Jaguars at Colts. The Jaguars clean sweep. Buccaneers at Vikings. Same again for a Vikings clean sweep. With the Titans taking on the Saints in New Orleans. Myself and Andy both think the Saints will win. Whereas Amy thinks the Titans will get the victory there. Next up we have the 49ers at the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now this is Andy and I's only disagreement in the entire 16 slate of games. I, alongside Mrs. Williams, have taken the Steelers to get the win here, whereas Andy has taken the 49ers. Uh, Next up, we've got the Cardinals at the Washington Commanders. Myself and Andy have taken the Commanders. Amy has taken the Cardinals. Um, We've got the Aaron Rodgers-less Green Bay Packers taking on the Chicago Bears. Me and Andy have both got the Bears to snap their losing streak or their, or their unlucky streak against the Packers and to get the win there whereas Amy has taken the Packers for the win in that one Raiders at Broncos we're all on the Broncos Dolphins at Chargers me and Andy have gone for Chargers whereas Amy's gone for the Dolphins uh, Eagles at Patriots we're all in for the Eagles Rams at Seahawks ditto but we're all in for the Seahawks the Sunday night game sees the Cowboys take on the Giants and we've all taken the Cowboys for the win and the first of Monday Night Football and the first Manning cast of the year sees the Buffalo Bills take on the new look Aaron Rodgers led New York Jets 
None of us think it's going to be a very happy start for Mr. Rogers as we've all taken the Bills to get the win. Oh, dear. I, in my defence, having picked him as MVP for the season, in my defence, it's the freaking Bills. I think, yes. I think, I imagine this season there's probably only one team that you're going to pick to beat the Bills, and I imagine not everybody on that week is going to be like, oh, I think the Bills are going to do it. So, yeah. Now then, is it time? It might be time. So. This so, is what, this, well, I'll, I'll let you go, but I've, I've got I've got an idea as to how we can uh, oh, no. fairly choose who gets to pick first. Russian rule. Um, I mean, I was literally going to go with, you know, I don't know, whoever lost last season should go first. This well, this is a Kit Kat wrapper that I had. After I finished my tea this evening. Did you, I will did place you eat it all one. your tea? I did eat all my tea. I was a good boy. Okay. So, I will place this into one of either my left or my right hand. Andy will then pick one of my hands. If he selects the hand that has the Kit Kat wrapper in it, he will get the option to choose whether to go first or second to lead us off and then in the following weeks after that it will be the person who doesn't win the week that gets the option to choose first or second in the subsequent weeks loser goes first as it's known in the business um yes so working on the principle that i'm pretty sure all the all the videos are reversed i have to physically say left or right not point although i suppose i I don't care anyway Right, are you ready for me to lose this draw? I suppose for the argument of um, watching on YouTube, you could say ring hand or non-ring hand. There we go. That's it, isn't it? Um, As a complete aside to this, um, dogs have a sense of smell that's millions of times times better than humans if I do this to my dog with a treat 100% of the time he gets it wrong uh, <laughs> ring ring hand for me please so that didn't work in as much as I tried to open it so that this would drop out of my ring hand so Andy was indeed correct in that it was in my ring hand. Therefore, he gets the option to choose if he wants to go first or if he wants to put me into bat, so to speak. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going first. Uh, and my, okay. My, my pick for week one season uh, is what will almost be no surprise. I would like the uh, Kansas City Chiefs versus the Detroit Lions, and I'd like the Lions to lose this one because the Chiefs are definitely winning that game. Interesting. Over to you, sir. Now, whilst I do agree that I think the Chiefs will win, the news that Travis Kelsey may not play is quite big. And I don't think the Lions are a terrible team in as much as obviously going into the last game of last season had the Seahawks not beat whoever it was that they were playing. The Lions had an outside chance of making the playoffs. All they needed to do was beat the Packers and they were in. And I would absolutely agree. The the Lions have been terrible for a long time but have got progressively better in the last couple of years and last season is probably the best season they've had in a long time so I agree but it's the Chiefs it's just it's, no, it's I, I do agree I do winning's agree. what they do um, 
my first selection that I would like to take. Um, I, uh, I I don't think it's um, I don't think it's out of the, out, outside the realms of possibility to uh, to state that this season's worst team will more than likely be the Arizona Cardinals. They don't have Kyler Murray for pretty much the majority of the season, and if they're sensible, they probably won't play him when he comes back from his knee injury, as they'll, they won't be in a position to challenge for the end of the season. So I would imagine they're just going to write off this season and start again from next season. So I am going for the Washington Commanders to beat the uh, Arizona Cardinals as my first side bet selection. I can tell and you I'm that. not going to lie, I think if we went back through the book, the chances are that is the first time that the Washington Commanders have ever been selected in the side bet. Um, I can tell you this much, from uh, Pickham's, um, 11% of people have picked the Cardinals, and I'm telling you now, every single one of those 11% is a Cardinals fan. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, I only had to go back as far as week 17 to see that I had picked the Commanders in one game. So, <laughs> to be fair, they were playing... Uh, oh, they were playing the Cleveland Browns. And the Browns won. So, uh, there's one in the eye for uh, for old Will, Will Dog there. Um, my second selection. Ooh, where do I want to go? I will go for the Philadelphia Eagles to beat the New England Patriots. Your two selections, Sam. I mean, I'm not going to be. I don't want to be that guy, but. I'm really surprised you've left the Buffalo Bills versus the New York Jets on the table for them. this guy to then pick up and go, the Bills are definitely winning that game. So that'll be my second pick. Is it? Wow. So Andy has taken with his first two selections the bookend game of the week. Who's um, he taking with his third pick? So I will be taking the Baltimore Ravens to beat the Houston Texans. Yeah, I'm annoyed at myself now. That should have been the second pick for me. I will go with the Atlanta Falcons. At home to the Carolina Panthers. Panthers obviously coming in for a bit of a rebuild. I know they've got a lot of new players, but probably won't hit the ground running, you'd like to think. But we'll see. And then to finish out my selections, I will go for. Oh, God, I can't believe I'm saying this. The Minnesota Vikings. To beat the Tampa Bay Lus. <laughs> Honestly, I was like, I know Paul's not picking that game. I'm going to pick this one up for for two reasons. One, there's never going to be a world that we could live in where Paul picks the Vikings to win a game. Just even if even if at some point in time he might have to acknowledge that they're an okay team, but. They're going up against your number one favourite quarterback. Um, for 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 lols, there's a part of me that just wants to, you know, throw it all, throw it all in the air and and throw out the uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars game, um, but that is not my selection. Um, you you didn't pick up the Bengals Browns game. I'm not, I'm not stepping on any toes. I I did not touch the Bengals Browns game. Right. right. Well, there we go. I will take the uh, Cincinnati Bengals to beat the Cleveland Browns. It's one of those things that I, I kind of want to caveat it with. 
Joe Burrow's dependent, but obviously that's not a thing, so I'm just gonna have to just gonna have to do it. Um, I realised uh, two picks in that we never actually explained what it was we were doing. Um, <laughs> But worked on the principle everybody knew what we were doing. Uh, it's very much a simple situation where week in, week out, we will put our picks into the hat for the whole week. And then myself and Paul have the opportunity to pick four banker games. Four games that we personally believe there is no way, shape or form, that they're going to go any other way than the way that we predict. If the, the, our pick wins, we get a point. Four points a week up for grabs per person. Obviously, Paul could get four points and I could get four points. We'd be no further on. Um, if anybody's interested and doesn't know the way this works, go back and check out last season's podcast. Because honestly, by the end of the season, I was more interested in the side bet than I was anything else. Because it was so close. Um... But yes, week in, week out, we we had an element where it did um, alienate our guest. I have given some thought to that, and I think we might be able to tag a guest pick on. Uh, I just need to sort of fine-tune the, uh, the scoring situation for the guest. Um, I think we, we, we dabbled with it back end of last season, where basically the guest picks who they think will win the side bet of the week um, but yeah we'll need some sort of points um, so that is that can you believe it it's that time again I'd like I'd love to say you know the the days are getting shorter and uh, you know the the woolly jumpers are coming out but as we mentioned right at the start of the podcast 27 degrees today, I'm in uh, shorts, no socks, flip-flops, it's, it's not ideal, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Um, personally, a big thank you from me to my glamorous co-host for doing all the legwork and, you know, allowing me to just turn up and look, look pretty for just over an hour. Um, a big thank you to our long-term, long-time, long-standing listeners. If you're a new listener, let us know what you think. Uh, we have an open standing invitation that if you want your name added into the book for the week's picks, send us an email, send us a DM, send us a text message, send us a pigeon. Let us know what your picks are for the week. We will add you to the book. We've got absolutely no issues with that. You can play against us. And let's put it this way. Play against us, get a prize. Win against us, double prizes, baby. That's right. We here at Cookie Cast like to reward our listeners, watchers, and family, fam. So if you want to be involved, get involved, and we will reward you. Paul, anything else from back end of the last season, the last season, the off season, the first week oh. of the first week of the season, anything like that. That that is me. Done and dusted, my friend. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um I don't think I've got anything. Um so from me to you, to you, to you, and to you. If you're listening, if you're watching, like, share, all that good stuff. Get in touch. Um, and we will catch you next week where I am assured we will have a guest. Which definitely means it will just be me and Paul next week. Until then, enjoy the first games of the season. And enjoy checking back in with us next week. Tatty buys. So there we go. What do you think to that? Football's back, baby. That's right. Absolutely, absolutely serious. I was going to say deadly serious, but I felt that it was a bit like. Um, 
Serious, if you want to be in touch and you want to be added to the book, 100%, 100%. If you add yourself to the book, prize, straight off the bat. If you add yourself to the book and you beat us, oh my word, you should see the prize I've got for you. Anyway, last bit of business here is, if you haven't already, like, share, subscribe and comment. If you have, get a friend or a family member to do it. Check out the website, thecookiecast.com. There you can get in touch with us. Send us an email with all your predictions on. and We'll add you to the book. It's as simple as that. That's it for this one, but it's just the start. Start of the season, so we'll be back next week with more NFL football. Until then, I'm going to say goodbye, and I'll see you then. Thank you for listening. Thank, Thank you for listening to Cookie Cast.